figured I'd take you guys in and have you guys meet Phil Taylor. If you've never met Phil Taylor, you uh, are in for a treat. And I'm wanting him to show us around the shop, give us a nickel tour, and you can see where all the torque converters that we sell you guys are manufactured at. Is that Phil Taylor? This is Phil Taylor. Is that LeVon Miller? How are you doing? <laughs> Fine, how are you? What are you doing with that Ohio, uh, Ohio outfit on? So I'm in Georgia now. It's warm here. <laughs> it is. What's up, Taylor? Hey, Bubba, how sir? you been? Good to see you. Good to see you guys, too. It's been a minute. Yeah, these are cores that we just ship them from our shop. So pretty much uh, all the cores that come in go in a Gaylord, and we ship it down to Phil. And then you bring it down here. Bring it down here. Them open. Yep, this is the cut-apart machine. Well, they've got the power. No, yeah. And I mean, this is a dirty, nasty job. It's the pit. Yeah. You know, I mean, we got one. Alan stays back here. And he likes it. Yeah. I mean, nobody can see him goof off. <laughs> And Sounds like a good job for Cody. Uh, this would be Cody's himself. spot. Yeah, yeah, he's back here by us. He can throw shit. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't even matter. Yeah. We've got this big, <laughs> we got a vat. We vat everything in it. Okay. And then that after. That pretty much takes all the paint and everything e off. Exactly. You know, paint and removes if there's any, whatever. Then we wash it. Yeah. And um, back around here it goes. Sweet. Like this right here, we'll take it around there. I'll show you here on the other side. We'll strip that clutch off. Okay. And replace it with you an oversized cut it off one. With the lathe, or yeah, you, we yeah. strip it with a lathe. Yeah. And it gives us a good surface to bond to. Yeah. Put an oversized clutch on it. After they get cut apart, they wind up on all of these poles. Okay. Like there's the machine. They'll, they'll cut the clutch off on that machine. Okay. This one there, we just mainly use it to machine the the larger parts to where the right pump fits down inside the front cover. Any clearances we need to do, we do on that one. I mean, they're all multi-purpose machines. We don't right. strictly use one just for one thing. Right. But they'll get them cut apart, clean. How are you on ratio from Dodge to Chevy to Ford currently? Like, are you doing a lot more of one one brand than the other? Well, Dodge tears. Uh, Dodge is notorious for their torque converters, so naturally right. we do more Dodges. But I mean, we do a good many. Uh, that's our Ford pile. There's the Allison pile. Dodge probably <coughs> two to one, okay. something like that. I would say. Do some welding and reinforcing on the turbines. Okay. Any you know weak things we. Uh, so you were showing me like to keep it from ballooning. You'll often re and you'll put a reinforcement on the pump. If we had something that looked like that, that you weld in there, okay. that's just a general idea because that's where it generally would internally balloon. It'll balloon, yeah. and what happens is it pushes this up basically around the stator. And, you know, we have to have our clearance between here and the impeller. Right. And it takes up all the clearance and it Smacks rubs each other, each other and all that's all she wrote. Yeah. It's over. But, you know, they weld in different hubs, reinforce things. And that's like a braze or is that an actual? That's a TIG braze. Okay. It's silicon bronze rods is what okay. we use on, on that. And, Thanks. you know, if, if they're furnace braze, we won't do it. But on the dodges, we'll go back in and reinforce okay. them right there. Just, well, pretty much you're just... Idea. Prepping everything here, then it goes gets assembled and brought back exactly. over here to weld. We we prep everything in batches yeah. because we've done so many. We know exactly what has to be done, you know. And they they do what has to be done. They go over there on the table. Everything stacks up, checks right. out, and then they hit the welder. Heck yeah! So this is where you stack it all together. This is the assembly area. Right now he's doing some refreshes on some things. Okay. But you know we do different modifications depending on whatever stall you want right you know and that's basically stall speeds changing the stator the and different pump. the stator or a different pump like you see this pump here that's a basically a, a neutral me, pump let's give the guys a quick crash course of how the fluid runs in a torque converter and what what changes stall speeds it's just a big circle yep is, is all it is like a fan At the, exactly and the blade size i mean the window size here the blade angle, the blade count, yep. all of that stuff affects the stall. So you pretty much are taking efficiency out of a torque converter when you increase the stall speed. You're making mm -hmm. it, Precisely. basically it can move more fluid through before it starts turning the input shaft. Precisely. But you see that one there is a basically a neutral pump. That's like out of a V10 okay. or a 400. This is your standard diesel pump. You see the different kind of angles of the fins right there on the side mm -hmm. this is more straight up and down exactly so right is here. that all yeah. all of that stuff so that that raises the stall on them and like to say yeah it increases the efficiency but the cool thing about a diesel we got all that torque and you put that clutch on right. the fluid coupling doesn't matter so pretty much just stall speed is only for before lockup i have guys who tell me that 
man, my, my truck's lugging real bad and, and I can't get on top of boost when I'm rolling down the highway at 60 mile an hour, well, you're in lockup. You're in lockup. Your stall speed will not change that. No. So once it's on one to one, it doesn't doesn't matter a at all. A converter that doesn't slip is a converter that doesn't slip. Right. I mean, it's like a manual transmission. So is do you set the height and everything here? Or yes, we set the it? height here before we weld it. Go in and check all the clutch clearances. Right. Be sure that we've got proper clutch clearance. We've got a minimum amount of clearance that we have to have between the turbine and the right. impeller right here. And we can adjust that by, if we need to machine this surface right here, take a little bit off to get the height down because, right. you know, if, you, if the converter's too tall, it takes out the pump. Right. Do you have a cover? That you can show where when we get converter chatter like in neutral and park yes. what happens when a converter like guys banging a lockup switch all the time what actually happens okay look you see some right there so see right here that the chatter marks in the billet cover that's where the steel tabs have actually worn into the cover and then there's more play in it and that's what you hear chattering when you're in neutral and park so exactly. we get a lot of people who ask you know after they beat on their truck for a while that the chatter got louder <laughs> Yep. And that's usually just because those the clutches are actually chattering. In there. Now, the diesels are so much quieter than they used to be. Right. Oh, hear. rattling 12 valve or VP truck, right. you could have a box of rocks in there and you wouldn't know any different, you know? <laughs> but see, I mean, it's, it's not like you have yeah, overabundance of movement, but that right there is what, what right. they'll hear. Because these, they'll, it'll beat these tabs down a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty much. We see you see that a lot more on trucks. Guys are just daily banging a lockup switch. <clears throat> Every time it grabs lockup, it's smacking against it. Exactly. Um, and guys who, yeah, guys who beat the shit out of them, that that's usually what ends up chattering. And just because it got loud doesn't mean it's bad. It's just ended up getting some clearance worn into that over the years. And we get the clutches stamped by Alto, you know. And I mean, if you get a stamp this off just a minuscule amount and a cover that may be off a minuscule amount they wind up together yeah. you could wind up hearing it a little more right. than you would you know some yep. of the others so cool well that's how a torque converter goes together it's really fairly simple very uh, simple pretty much the main things that can go wrong in a converter would be either ballooning to where the the turbine and the pump are smacking they each make, other they make right. contact one common or, thing we see is an in, on install yes that's, that's a sprag eliminator okay that's a sprite list for a race application. Mm -hmm. That's a race application. That seal right in there. Yeah. You know, a lot of times they can be aggravating to get on the... That's where the input shaft, the tip of the input shaft seals on there. So if you're fighting a converter onto the input shaft and you're too rough with it, you can push that seal off and you can have a brand new torque converter that doesn't have full lockup because it's not sealing exactly. up on the tip Exactly, even of the if input. you just nick it ever right. so slightly that's why you want to just try to make sure that you roll a torque converter onto the input shaft without exactly. fighting the thing do you have a burned up lockup clutch versus a, oh i'm sure we have i'm sure you more. do but being that this is a it's not a captive clutch torque converter basically it's going to pressurize this side of the torque converter when it's not in lockup the fluid's going to come into this side and it's going to return on the back side to where it's, it's going to keep the well no it's actually going to go the opposite of that sorry Let's start over with that. <laughs> so with lockup, fluid comes through the tip of the input shaft through the bottom underneath here on the billet uh, cover, and it actually holds the lockup clutch. Yeah, right that there. Right that's there. where that seal is. And it actually holds the lockup clutch off the front cover. And that's why as you increase your RPM, launch RPM, and race applications, we need to keep increasing our fluid volume going through the center of the input to hold that converter, that lockup clutch off the front cover. That's why I see guys run it, you know, go to 3,500 RPM, wound up tight, and then they're on the converter for 15 seconds. Then the fluid heats up so fast in there, it expands pressure and it can't escape, and then it starts balancing the pressure between this side of the lockup clutch and this side, and then centrifugal force will drag the lockup clutch against the front cover, and you'll destroy a torque converter. And it really was just because of the heat expansion on this side. So when lockup is applied, instead of the fluid going through the center of the input shaft and holding lockup off, fluid switches from being applied through this hole between these two seals going through here to being applied right here, which ends up on the side of here and pressurizes this side and blows the lockup clutch against this front cover. And that's why your pressure balance with your valve body is so important. And that's why nine times out of 10, when guys have a converter lockup clutch failure, 
we look at the valve body first because majority of the problems lie in the valve body when this can be from pressure imbalances. The converters get burned up at the starting line. Right. Not going down the track. Guys have got, you know, data loggers, everything. You can see if the converter clutch is slipping. It's not slipping, it's just getting overheated and burned right. up at the line. Yep. Show and me what, a burned up lockup clutch. And once they start getting burned up, uh, overheating, they deteriorate. The clutch wasn't necessarily one slipping. Yeah. You see how it got hot and just started deteriorating, just, and all that yep. crap winds up in your like black charcoal uh, in your pan right. and electronics and everything else. That's when you drop the pan and the whole pan is just, just blacker just than black, full of garbage. Yep. Exactly. Because this is the the biggest clutch surface area in the whole transmission. So when you tear up a lockup clutch, you have a bunch of material in the pan. A lot pan. of material. Yep. Exactly. And then you've got one additional clutch. That's why getting your converter stall speed is so, so important. Because if you don't get your converter stall speed right, you want to get it right to where you can pull up the line, spool quickly, launch, and you don't sit there building a ton of heat. Because you make heat extremely, extremely fast quick. when you're making 500 horsepower on the line, holding the truck back with the brakes. That's what, that's where you'll tear up a torque converter nine times out of ten. Yep. Cool. Anything else cool you want to show us? I don't know. I got so much cool shit around here. I look at it every day. It's not cool to me. <laughs> and you got your paint booth over here? Yeah, I got the paint booth over here. We are having a national shortage of torque converter blue paint, so it's yeah. going to be a rainbow. I don't know well, what you're going to get. <laughs> well, it turns out we did the same thing with gold paint. We were completely out. I went to my local hardware store and they have their Rust-Oleum account and we ordered a whole pallet of it and it finally showed up. So I got enough paint for about a year. But yeah, it was got to the point where like I couldn't buy my paint that I bought since 2012. And I'm like, That's where we are. We've yeah. gotten phone calls. What's wrong, man? This torque converter in blue. I'm like, I'm sorry, COVID killed the blue paint. I mean, I don't know what to say. <laughs> to wrap it up, um, Phil built, started this mess. Taylor over here, he's the one that. You know what you're doing final assembly. He's doing final assembly now. Or Taylor's what? the shop foreman. He just yeah. he runs everything back here. He builds converters. He's taught. Another guy here to yeah. build converters. He just oversees everything. And I mean, he builds converters every day too. Yeah. But um, and then you I get... stay up front. Yeah. Hence my girlish figure. <laughs> <laughs> so if you call down here, you might get Phil on the phone, and you'll understand. It's never a dull moment. So it's always fun to call down here because Phil will just brighten your day, even if your torque converter is junk. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. So. If you guys need something, uh, obviously we deal with all diesel performance converters at Firepunk, and, but if you've got uh, Chevy and Ford torque converter needs, he can also build it here. So this is the operation and we wanted to give you a quick little shop tour. So hope you guys enjoyed it.